Okay. Um, hey, good morning once again. Good morning, online students. Thanks for waiting. Um, we will start right away. Let's uh, let's pray and we'll start. Right? Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time that you've given us, Lord, to look into your word. Master, we we ask that you would once again speak to us. Lord, we ask that um, even as we look into your word, Lord, we pray that your word will become a revelation in our hearts. Lord, by your spirit, I pray, Father God, that we will be able to, Lord, we'll be keen to apply, Lord, whatever you reveal to us, Lord. Every revelation, I pray, Father God, even as we apply, even as we believe, even as we receive it, Lord, I pray that it will be a conviction in our heart, moving us to act on it, God. And I pray that it will change us, transform us, and those around us. We thank you. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, last class, who remembers what we studied? Anything, any one thing that you can share from this row? What you learned in last class? Huh? Types of types of worship. Okay, those are different words of praise, right? Hebrew words for praise. Okay, someone from here. What do you remember? Huh? Sorry. Ah, huh. so that is already done. Different words of worship. Of praise, he said. Anything else? Yeah, one, this row, this row. What do you remember from last class? Online students also, you can post what you recall, what you remember from last class. Yeah. Okay, this row. What do you remember? What is the first thing? This is one thing. Yes, what is the first thing you said? Definition of praise. Okay, what is it? Applauding, commending, approving. Okay, here you were saying something. Yeah. Difference between praise and worship. Okay, so what is one difference that stays in your mind? Yeah, but what is the difference between praise and worship? What is that one difference that... Yeah. Mm. Um, what is the physical form? Mm. So what is that? I think it's the other way around, right? It's the other way. Like praise is verbal, vocal, and uh, it's something that you do. It's something that is proclaimed. Whereas worship, if you look at it, need not be, right? It is more introspective, reflective. It can be quiet. It need not be. No, yes, of course we can always declare it, but it it need not be. But praise has to be something that is. You know that you speak out, that you declare, that you do. You know it's expressive in nature. So that's one difference. Anything? So. Sorry. Right. So I mean. Right. So it's a response of. It's our response to the revelation of who God is, what He has done. And uh, both praise and worship, you know, it's a it's a revela it's a response of that. Yeah, okay. That row, what is it that you? Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Again. Yeah, human beings, you know, all creation actually, and particularly human beings are are designed created to worship God. So when we understand what worship is, you know, it is to be in awe of someone or something. And to give ourselves entirely to it, right? That is worship. You know, when you say I worship you, just think about it, right? You're saying I, I'm in awe of you, and I yield, I surrender completely to you, right? So yes, as human beings, we are, you know, de designed. Okay. So I see all your online comments, differences, uh, 
uh, about water sprays. Yeah, very important. Um, that's a very op nice, in important observation. Praise is horizontal in nature, most part, right? And worship is vertical, meaning praise can be like telling others about God. Praise can be inviting others to the presence of God. You know, see, you know, you know how good or how great God is. But worship is direct, right? It is vertical. Vertical meaning, you know, this this direction, right? Horizontal is like this, left to right. Vertical is up to down. So, um, worship is vertical most uh, most of the times, right? It is direct in nature. Okay. Um, then we looked at those words. What words do you remember? Hebrew words. What does yada mean? What does yada mean? Anyone? Okay, this road didn't answer. Yada, what does it mean? <laughs> huh? This road, this road. Yada. Okay, can you all ex you know demonstrate yada for me, for us? This row. The hands of praise. Yeah, yeah. I'm just asking, uh, sorry, I'm just asking this uh, row here. Uh, yes, thank you, Anthony. Yeah. So what does it mean, the hands of praise? It means that a hand is extended, lifted up, right? Uh, it's thrown out in the direction of the one whom you're worshipping, right? And it's expressing a lot of things like surrender, receiving, reaching out, hunger, etc. Okay, and we also looked at Toda. What does that mean? Yeah, it is similar to Yada, but it's giving thanks. Thanks, thanks for what? Yeah, it is giving thanks for what he have, what we have received, what he has done. But in addition to that, it is also what is unique about this expression is that it is also giving thanks for things that you have not yet received or the answers that have not is not yet manifested in our lives. So it is a it is an act of faith, right? It is an act of expectation. Uh, you know, and, and then we are saying, you know, God, I praise you, right? Okay. Then, halal. It's a loud celebration, right? Uh, even even a, a foolish celebration uh, about God, right? You're celebrating, you're praising, you're shouting, and, you know, that is what we see about God. Okay. Um, I just wanted to tell you one, um, one incident that happened. When I was in college, when I became a believer, right, and this was uh, a conversation which I had with a friend who was uh, who was an atheist. Okay, so he was a you know well known well known as an avowed atheist. So he uh, he and I were having a conversation. Then he was asking, "Hey, what do you guys do in the youth group? What do you do?" So I said, uh, first we have a time of uh, worship, and then we have this." You know, somebody teaches from the Bible, and so we were just inviting and saying, "Come, it's interesting. You know, you can come. It'll be nice." So he said, "You know, you worship." Okay. So he said, he asked me that question again. You worship. You know, how can you worship something? Okay. So that was his question. How can he was very serious? You know, how can you worship something? And then I. I said, why, why not? You know, we, we sing, we, we pray, we worship, and I, I just left it at that. But years later, when I thought about this question, I thought it was a very valid question, right? Now, he, he didn't have a concept of God or he didn't want to, right? He was an atheist. But he said, you know, how can you worship something? How can you worship someone? And I felt that he understood more about worship than I did at that point. Right? He understood more about worship. Why? Because he's, he's looking at, he's saying, you know, worship is giving yourself completely. Give, worship is throwing yourself down in reverence and respect. Worship is in complete awe of someone. You're just losing your identity, uh, uh, you know, and then just your identity is becoming one with him. And he's asking me, you know, how can you worship? Right? So then I realized years later that he understood what worship was. And he was 
you know, he was really surprised that somebody could actually bring themselves to that level of being awe of someone, of surrendering to someone, right? Of yielding and saying, you know, you are my everything, you are my all in all, right? So that atheist, you know, he had an, a better understanding of worship. So he was so, he was offended, he was, he was incredulous that somebody or something would really worship. How can you worship? So we need to have that revelation of what worship is. Right? We know that it's not about singing songs. We know that it's not about fast songs or slow songs. We know that it's, it's not just about the physical expressions even. Right? But it's something to do with our hearts, something to do with our lives. It starts right there. Every expression of worship or every act of worship starts there in our hearts, in our relationship with God, where we say, God, I've understood I've, or I've tried to understand who you are and I'm in awe of you. And I'm in awe of you, God, and I yield, I surrender, I give myself to you. And even as we journey on, you know, let's, let's continue to be in awe of God. And every revelation that we get, every, everything that the Holy Spirit, you know, opens our minds to, opens our eyes to, right? Let's be, let's just receive it in our hearts and let's, you know, take it back to Him. And one way to, you know, to, to really sustain that is to have that constant conversation, just like the psalmist did, right? To have that constant conversation with God, right? In our pain, to have that conversation. Or in our doubts and questions, to continue to have that conversation, right? And in our moments of joy and victory and whatever season of life, whatever emotions that we go through, to turn it back to Him and have that conversation with our Lord. Right? And then, you know, our hearts will continue to receive. Our hearts will continue to be in awe of Him, right? Despite whatever seasons that we go through. So when we are in awe of God, our, everything changes, like our prayer changes, our worship changes, our lifestyle changes, but it depends on our heart posture and our heart's condition in the, before our God, right? Okay, so let's look at uh, the few other words that we see uh, in the Hebrew um, language, right? So we see this word Shabak, okay, Shabak. So what is it? It's a loud adoration, it's a shout, it's a commendation, it's a, it's a shout of triumph, okay. It's a shout of triumph, it's a shout of victory, it's a shout of even adoration, but it's a shout, okay. What is a shout? It's a loud exclamation, yeah. It's, it's loud, it's, it's tumultuous. You lift our voice, there's volume, right? There's power. And it is like, you know, you're, you're getting the attention of something. You're, you're saying, you know, maybe if it's a victory, you're just shouting out with all our, you know, your spirit, soul, body, everything is just engaged in it. And you're shouting, right? And we see several examples of that in scripture. We will look at, you know, shouting in praise. We will see that. Um, but I just want to want to turn our attention to these couple of verses, you know, one Psalm 145 and verse 4. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty works. And the word used there is Shabak, right? To declare your mighty works. So, so what is the difference between Shabak and Halal? You know, here it is, it is a shout, it is an intentional shout. Whereas halal could be you know, it's, it could be a foolish celebration and it's more celebratory in nature. Here it's a shout of victory. But one other unique thing about Shabak is that it is also a word that is used to quieten something, right? Maybe, you know, to quieten a storm, to quieten, you know, our own emotions, right? So it's a word which is used for that. So we see that it goes in both directions. It could be a shout of triumph, but it's also a shout to 
quieten, to bring down everything to from a place of chaos to a place of peace. Right? Shabak. Okay. In other words, praise the Lord, all you nations. Psalm 117 and verse 1. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise Him, or Shabak, all you people of the earth. Okay? So praise the Lord. Right? <coughs> So, we could be coming from different, you know, backgrounds, church backgrounds, different where we are used to worshipping in different ways. But we see, when we see these expressions of praise or these words which bring out different expressions of praise, then we need to stretch and go beyond our level of comfort and even tradition. Right? And come to a scriptural way of praising and worshipping, right? When there's a revelation of God, when there's a revelation of the victory of God, right? when there's a revelation of impending victory, on the threshold of victory, right? we shout out, a shout out a victory, shout out a praise which is victorious in nature, okay? So how many of you are used to a very reverential worship, you know, quiet? I come from that background. Where worship meant you be quiet. No, don't even speak. Be quiet. Right? So that meant reverence. That meant respect. That meant honor. And, um, and, and many times, you know, I think last class also I mentioned where one, one person meant, you know, on the way out said, um, you know, maybe this is for young people. This kind of worship is for young people, not for old folks like us. Right? Even yesterday, I was having a conversation with someone who was, you know, maybe in the mid seventies, and and the person was also saying the same thing. You know, maybe, you know, this worship, this kind of worship, is for young people. Maybe not for, you know, old people like us. Right? But actually, when you look at the Bible, you see that it is across generations. Yes or no? Yeah, it's not just for, you know, whatever we see. The truth it applies. Across generations, right? Across ethnicities, even across you know cultures, right? This cuts cuts across all that nationalities, culture, ethnicity, and age, and everything. So, this shout of praise, shabak, we need to remember it's not just for young people. It's not just for a particular age group. It's not just for a particular gender. Even it's like okay, you know, let the guys shout out. You know, let all the women keep quiet. No. It is across all that, right? So it's a shout of praise. Because I'm saying this because you might encounter, you know, such in, in conversation, such arguments or such, you know, doubts and you know, people asking, you know, maybe this kind of thing is for this particular denomination, you know, this clapping of hands, this shouting, this loud is for maybe this particular denomination, you know, which is wearing all white, maybe, you know, this is for this particular denomination. But whereas we are, you know, we are from this denomination. We don't do all that. You know, we are very dignified in our worship. Right? You might face such things, right? And they are sincere, right? It's it, it's based on their understanding of what worship they have, you know, understanding that they have been taught or whatever they've received generation to generation. But when we look into the word of God, and that's the thing, that's important because let's look at this verse. We'll come back to this verse over and over again. Um, John chapter 4, okay, we'll come back to it later also, right, John chapter 4 and verses 23 and 24, okay, John chapter 4 verses 23 and 24, John chapter 4, 23, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Verse, verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Who is speaking these words? Lord, Lord Jesus. To whom is He saying these words? Huh? The woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, she's having this conversation and she's asking some questions. You know, do you Jews say that we should worship in this mountain, that mountain and, you know, in this place, but, you know, our forefathers worshipped here. So 
So the Lord is answering and he's saying, you know, there will come a time when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And look at it. The Father is seeking. What is he seeking? Who is he seeking? He's seeking the worshippers. Right? He's seeking. His heart is for true worshippers who will worship in spirit and truth. Right? And what kind of worship are these true worshippers going to worship with? It is worship or worship of spirit and truth. Right? So what is truth? The word of God is truth. Right? So which means that you worship in spirit out of our innermost being. As led by the spirit of God out of our innermost being, you worship. Then it also says, which means that it is not a superficial thing. It is something deep. It also says you worship in truth, which means truth is the opposite of lie. Truth is the opposite of, you know, pretense, right? Any hypocrisy or pretense, it's opposite of all that. So the Lord is saying this. The Lord is saying, and so, so, you know, we better take note of it. The Lord Jesus is saying, this is how worship will be, or this is how worship should be. Right? If you're worshiping the Father, who is the Spirit, God is Spirit, and those who worship Him, He didn't say can, He, he didn't say, you know, you know, maybe you can, or give an option, but He said those who worship must worship in Spirit and truth. Right? So there is freedom. There is also something which is at the core, one foundational thing is saying, hey, this is what it is. It can't go outside of this. Right? This is it. It has to be in spirit and truth. But then there could be varied expressions, right? because the Bible talks about that, varied expressions. But it needs to be spirit and truth. When you say truth, it is opposite of lies, deceptions, whatever, pretense, but it also according to the Word of God, as prescribed in the Word of God. You know, some people um, have this thing of saying, you know, according to me, this is how I praise. You know, this is how I want to worship. There's nothing wrong with that statement, but over and above that, we need to see that what does the Word of God say? What does the Bible say? Yeah, you're saying that, okay, this is what, this is how I like to worship, which means you're saying, this is my preference, this is my comfort level, right? This is what I'm used to. We're saying all that. When somebody says, you know, this is how I want to or I'd like to. But over and above that, there is something that God desires, right? That is worship in spirit and in truth. When we say spirit and in truth, that means that we need to look into the truth. The Lord Jesus says, right, thy word is truth. Your word is truth. And he's you know, referring to the Father. So we look into the word as prescribed by the word. And we are studying all these words. We're saying shavak, which is a shout of praise, is a valid expression of praise unto God. Right? Okay, we'll take a break. And then we'll come back in 10 minutes.